delegation from West Africa's main political and economic bloc, ECOWAS, met earlier today. This is a day after he suspended Guinea's membership of the regional body in response to a coup. ECOWAS says the delegation will assess the situation following Sunday's overthrow of President Alpha Conde. The regional body made no mention of any possible sanctions against the coup plotters or its leader, Mamadi Dumbuya, a former officer in the French Foreign Legion. Dumbuya was the head of an elite army unit before seizing power. He has since moved to consolidate his support base, meeting with ambassadors from Russia, China, Turkey, France, and the United States on Wednesday. Meanwhile, life in the capital is gradually returning to normal. The main matter which has brought us here, which is the regret, the unfortunate and regrettable incident that has taken place in Guinea. And it is to discuss that and to discuss our response to this clear violation of our common charter of governance, of good governance in the ECOWAS region. All right, well, well for, more, for more on this, Nigeria's begin. former deputy permanent representative to the United Nations uh, joins us now. Uh, glad to have you uh, join us on the program. Glad to have you join us. All right. Uh, well, let's start with the fact of sanctions for these coup plotters. Is it making any difference? Because the same thing that happened in Mali is occurring in Alpha Conde's nation, Guinea. Is it making any difference? Program. Uh, it is indeed a very important issue to discuss, particularly when a sitting democratic government is overthrown by the military of that country. In terms of the sanctions, it is important to know that sometimes sanctions can be blunt instruments that do not really cut with precision. The leaders in ECOWAS have learned from experience to be measured and to leave some avenues for dialogue and discussion. Going straight forward up in issue from the beginning to impose sanctions will impede the progress of negotiation, of dialogue, discussion, and perhaps to make the coup leaders malleable to reforming or changing their attitude. So our leaders are very wise and they have gained wisdom from experience in terms of not leaving, not closing all channels for dialogue. So I think the idea of sanctions may incrementally arise, but for the time being, I think they are opening the room or the door for dialogue, for discussion, for reason to prevail. How much impact will this uh, suspension by the ECOWAS regional bloc have on the unfolding events in Guinea and uh, ECOWAS's call for an immediate return to constitutional order? And would you agree with critics who say that the economic bloc, that's ECOWAS, uh, the, the response has not been robust enough in recent months against, you know, democratic backsliding in the region? Mm. Well, yes, indeed, uh, it is worrisome, the backsliding of democracy uh, and the slide into military dictatorship is very worrisome. Uh, in, five, in five months, from April to, uh, to this week, we have had four changes in government and an attempted coup in Niger, making it four. And that is actually four too many uh, backsliding into, democracy, uh, into military dictatorship. However, uh, the ECOWAS has mechanisms in place, institutional mechanisms in place, charter programs and responsibilities in place to address the unconstitutional changes taking in, uh, place in the region. Now, the critics are right in pointing out certain deficiencies and improvisations in the approach of ECOWAS, but you, man, you must remember that ECOWAS is a multinational intergovernmental organization. The effectiveness of the organization rests on the will, willingness, and capacities of the individual member states to act in concert. 
And so far, from the communique that was issued uh, at the meeting, the virtual meeting uh, of the extraordinary summit uh, of heads of state and government, there is the willingness, the determination, and the will to address the issue in Guinea by actually, first of all, sending a delegation, not necessarily a fact-finding delegation, but a delegation that will establish the state of affairs in the country and also to convey the message of the authority of heads of state and government and ECOWAS to the coup leaders and to warn them in particularly about the displeasure of the members of the uh, economic community and perhaps to urge them to be responsible in terms of opening up dialogue for instance, the demand not to harm the ousted leader and other uh, leaders that were arrested, uh, to release them from their confinement or house arrest, and also not to impede any return to the, uh, not to the status quo exactly, but to a civilian uh, administration or government in the country. So the message will be sent very clearly uh, to, to, to the coup leaders. Everything will depend on their response. Are they going to be responsible, pragmatic, and respond tolerably to the demarche made to them by the ECOWAS leaders or not? So we will see from their response what the next stage uh, will be. There will be many options uh, for the ECOWAS leaders uh, to consider, but that will depend upon the reaction of the coup leaders. All right, thank you so much, Ambassador Usman Serki. Nigeria's former deputy represent, uh, permanent representative uh, to the United Nations. Thank you so much for joining us.